a team that had two lottery selections on draft night a couple of nights ago and doesn't really have much in the way of free agents to deal with the summer. The decisions for them is going to come at the guard position with Markel Fultz and Cole Anthony being extension eligible. Of course, they just drafted a couple of guys who can play the two uh, a couple of nights ago. Uh, I'll start with you here, Mo. Uh, what are you thinking about Orlando heading into the summer? And most specifically, because that's the primary concern for them, what do you see uh, about their guard situation heading into the summer? All right. So kind of touched on this in the draft stream. Um, didn't expect them to pick a guard with the I, – I forget. I'm, I'm terrible at drafts. What pick they had, six. the 10th pick? Pick six, six and pick 11. 11. Damn, that was high. Oh, my goodness. They took a guard super high. Definitely wasn't expecting that, especially when we had uh, – talented wings on the board still, but he slid and whatever. Um, they got to figure out their guard situation. Do they want to continue with Markel Fultz and his development? Do they want to go the Jalen Suggs route? Do they want to go the Cole Anthony route? They most, most likely what they do is continue on with Markel Fultz because he has been uh, pretty damn good for them. He's, you know, jumped past both of their uh, other guards. Um, and as far as them, I, the other two, it doesn't really. I don't think it matters too much uh, what decision you make with them. In my opinion, you could probably get rid of both of them and you know keep your six pick or whatever. Um, some of the other free agents that they have, Mo Wagner. I would like to see them, uh, you know, go go return with Mo Wagner. He's he's pretty damn good. Uh, Goga be. I don't know his name, so I'm not even gonna try it. Mark <laughs> Carter, Michael Carter Williams. That's his name. He goodbye. Admiral Schofield. Goodbye. <laughs> and um, somebody that's also uh, extension eligible, Jonathan Isaac. I don't know if they're still going to like hold out hope that Jonathan Isaac can, you know, fully bounce back from the injury and, you know, show that pot that potential that he absolutely probably still has. I say that a lot. Absolutely. Probably. Uh, but if they do, that's an avenue they could go. I wouldn't put it past them to do so, honestly, because they still are years away from contention and maybe they want to give them another chance uh, to, you know, stay healthy and impact the team as well. I wouldn't be opposed to them doing that. That's probably also what they're going to do. So yeah, Orlando, interesting team. Don't really see the point in, you know, them drafting that guard at six, but they did. So hopefully that means that they're going to make a decision on their future. And yeah, I like Markel Fultz. So, he should be a part of this team's future. Hey, Mo, you know what? I like Markel Fultz, too. And I was a little surprised when they took a guard at the sixth pick. Uh, you guys know how I feel about Anthony Black. Um, you know, I made a video about it, said it on the draft stream. Anthony Black is a very unique player, great player, a tall guard, a defensive guard, very good at switching. You know, he could, he could cover all bases. I would like him. Not on the Orlando Magic, though. I, I don't understand. I'm really upset because I really thought the Orlando Magic needed needed this draft to really catapult themselves into real playoff contention. But they failed. They failed. They took Anthony Black. You got you have Markel Fultz, Cole Anthony, and Jalen Suggs, a very good trio of, of, of productive guards. And I really didn't understand that. And taking Jet Howard at 11th way too high, especially when he was projected to get taken somewhere in the 20s, I, I, me, me, I, I don't get it. I'm really frustrated on that part when it comes to the Orlando Magic. But this season is going to be very interesting. And unfortunately, because they picked Anthony Black so high, you now have to wait the end, well, I, I would say the until the end of the upcoming season to see what you want to do with both Markel Fultz and Cole Anthony as they're only under contract for one more year. Maybe you want to uh, um, let one go or trade one and put Anthony Black in that position. But guess what? The Orlando Magic are a poor three-point shooting team. Uh, if they were to take a guard at the sixth pick, get somebody that can shoot. Get somebody that can stretch the floor because at the end of the day, the ball is going to be in either Marco Fultz's hand. It's going to be in Franz Wagner's hand. It's going to be in Paolo Bencaro's hands. You're going to have Anthony Black run the offense playmate when Paolo Bencaro is a 29% three-point shooter. Uh, Marco Fultz a 31%. Like, it, it, it really doesn't make sense to me. Um, but when it comes to their free agents, like I said, I told you guys about Marco Fultz and Cole Anthony, what they need to do there. Um, Chumo Kiki has showed that he's really not a productive NBA player yet. 
I don't know if you want to continue to wait and take a chance on him. I would move on from him. Jonathan Isaac is very interesting. Um, unfortunately, he just hasn't happened to pan out due to his constant, constant knee injuries. And you're you're gonna have some real decisions there. I don't know how much value he really has because he's been a, uh, unable to stay on the court. Um, Admiral Schofield, uh, you could go as well, buddy. I don't know what to say. Uh, Michael Carter, Michael Carter Williams. Hey, they just drafted your doppelganger, so I, I don't know what they do with Michael Carter Williams either. But the Orlando Magic, um, they have a really uh interesting season. I really, I really was hoping to see them be in the playoffs or some type of playing situation this year, but because of the SB Black situation, I feel, I feel like. Two things are going to happen. Either Markel Fultz and Cole Anthony are going to play their ass off and show that they belong on this team, or they're going to fold and the chemistry is really going to dissipate and not be there because they have a guy and they have to look over their shoulder constantly at the guy that's trying to take their spot. So the the Markel Fultz, uh, the Orlando Magic are going to have a very interesting 2023-2024 season. Well, first of all, Jay, you're wrong about 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 Anthony Black. Um, see, like I see kind of what you mean a little bit, just because he's a bigger guard. He's kind of in a similar. It feels like he can contribute to them in a lot of ways that Fultz already can, and he's not going to get that instant uh, run over Fultz more than likely. Um, he'd have to like really show it, like in in preseason and like training camp and stuff like that. And the odds are that's probably not going to happen, um, you know. But I feel like personally, like with Anthony Black, I mean, I'm looking at their guard depth. I mean, personally for me, I've never really been too high on Jalen Suggs. So I feel like there is a possibility, there is a world where he could get traded. Um, he has been kind of a little bit inconsistent. Um, but I feel like I wouldn't be surprised if maybe they, they stagnated them, like maybe as Anthony Black like coming off the bench which might not be ideal, but of course there is rumors that they're trying to trade Cole Anthony too, or see like what they can get for him. So if they started both of them, yeah, the shooting is not going to be great. Although granted Markel Fultz was shooting a lot better uh, last year. And then he actually I think he missed a couple games in the middle of the year. And then after that point shooting went down, but for a, most of the year, he was shooting like 35, 36% from three. So I went and obviously not high volume, but if he can just continue that and shoot around 36, 37, even if it's not even high volume or anything like that, that's a huge plus. Um, I feel like part of the things you were saying, though, against like Anthony Black being a good fit on the team is because, you know, when he play makes, like he's not going to have many options to find like on the perimeter. And I think there's a few things with that. First of all, I think, like I said, Mark Hill Fultz is probably going to have the ball in his hands most of the time in terms of playmaking. So I don't know if that opportunity would present itself as much as maybe you're anticipating. But at the same breath, I think part of that is also just kind of the fault of the magic currently. And, like, they're not really an, a great three-point shooting team. Like, a lot of their guys, a lot of their guards are really inconsistent, if you think about it, from shooting from three. So, you know, maybe that's not ideal for him, not an ideal scenario for him if he wanted to play like that. But I think there's other ways he can contribute too. I mean, when you look at the Orlando Magic, though, like they just have – I think they have enough young talent in every position personally. Like I, I think that they have that. One of the biggest problems has just been, um, you know, staying healthy. I think they have enough veterans on their team. Um, you know, if they still have Gary Harris this year and then they have Michael Carter-Williams this year, I mean, that could be two vets right there that provide some experience. Carter-Williams doesn't have much like playoff experience really, but Gary Harris does. Um, so I, and I'm, I've always been high on Gary Harris as well. So I like that along with other guys like Fultz, uh, you know, like Cole Anthony and Bull Bull and obviously Paolo and Franz and stuff like that. Um, so, and Wendell Carter, of course, like they have a lot of guys that, you know, it's just a matter of putting it all together. And I think, um, the reason why I wasn't too high on Jalen Suggs is because personally for me, I mean, I don't know what you guys think. I think at least in terms of getting on the same wavelength as his players, I think Jamal Mosley is like one of the best coaches in the league in that regard. You know, like, so I think he's probably because of that, he's going to be here for quite a while. And be, also because of that, it just hasn't seemed like Jalen Suggs has, you know, seen it translate on the court. Um, you know, I don't, I wouldn't think there's like something behind the scenes that we don't know about, like with him and Mosley or anything like that. 
it just doesn't seem like on the court is translated well. And there's, there's a reason why a lot of the NBA players, even past and present, say, like, it's about fit. It's about getting your opportunity. So I think maybe they could trade him and, like, see what they can get for him. I mean, he's still pretty young. He's only, like, what, 22? So, like, they could definitely get some value for him. Um, and maybe the only maybe area that I would be a little concerned about is small forward because we know Jonathan Isaac is, like – I don't even know. It's as brittle as a gas bottle or in gas bottle, glass bottle. <laughs> Jesus. Um, no, <laughs> but uh, yeah. So I, I, I don't know. I think that's probably the only concern I would have. Um, I have high expectations for the Orlando Magic though next year. I think, you know, I expect this year they'll be healthy enough to go throughout the course of the regular season. And I know it's a hot take, but I and I know we have all free agency yet, but. I'm feeling confident that they'll be a top six seed, and I feel like they could be the fifth seed in the East next year. Wow, wow. big hopes! Mm. It's big. We big still got to see a lot, but I, that's that's just what it, I think they can definitely do it. Um, but interesting potential yeah. projection. I know Devin <laughs> agrees with me. Yeah, no, no, <laughs> definitely, definitely uh, some hopeful, um, hopeful wishing. But I hear what you're saying, though, brother. Uh, they could make some right moves, and they could be headed in that direction. Uh, but as far as the Orlando Magic, to be honest with you, I don't have much I want to touch on. I just want to kind of talk about the fact that them drafting Anthony Black now they have five like point guards or five like one one point guards as shooting guards like that's actually like re- really wild so do just want to give some credit to 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 Jay on that take because that is I just I just think that's just poor drafting in my opinion similar to uh and I'm sorry Devin I got to bring it up but, but the Toronto rap you just keep drafting the same pro, like same type of player same archetype type of player um, so I just don't think that's a great idea. Uh, Anthony Black, though, I do want to give him his, his, his credit. I know Jay was hating on him. Um, I think he's a great defender. I'm not gonna lie. I think out of this draft, he's one of the best perimeter defenders in this draft. So I think he, that, that'll be big for the Orlando Magic. And now to touch on what they should do with some of those guards, I think personally you do away with uh, with Cole Anthony. Uh, I know a lot of a lot of the guys here are more on side of are more on the side of Cole Anthony and less believing in Jalen Suggs. I'm a little bit more on Jalen Suggs, not gonna lie, just because I I've said this before. I just think he's the, the out of all the young guys, just the greatest, uh, just pure athlete. And a lot of the times that really in basketball usually just does generate, especially on on the defensive end, offensive end. I think. He can also put the put the ball down on the ground and go get a bucket for himself. Um, and if you if you do away with Quinn Anthony, I'm not saying this man has a lot of trade value, um, but I think you should you should try to get a big to help um, to help Wendell because yeah, Jonathan Isaac he's as um, as <laughs> Garrett. I, I was trying to say to your point earlier, he's he's as as brittle or as whatever you you were saying brittle. He's as brittle as AD. So you just never know, man. Like he can hit. He can That's hit. That's not. What are we doing here? Come what on, are we doing? Man, here, actually, bro? actually, the AD AD looks like <laughs> Superman compared to him. Literally, man, come like, on. What are we doing here? So That's look, disrespectful. Oh, that my. is disrespectful. But as as How- as. He's he's on watch as a fraudulent Laker fan. He's on he's on notice. Come he on. looks like she calls anyway. Yao Ming, and that's look, my guy. Look, look, this is the, this is all I'll say. You need a real. You're gonna have to get another real big to help Wendell, uh, because Jonathan Isaac was um, a potential defensive player of the year candidate in at least in the 2020 uh, year. And um, I mean, besides that, figure out the point guard situation. <laughs> Honestly, I'm high on the Lando Magic too. Um, so this year they were 34 and 48, I believe. Yeah, 34 and 48, third team seed. Um, Yuck. fun fact okay, that's cool. Um, fun fact that's their best record uh, for uh, total wins since 2018 2019, where that team had 42 wins and that roster had uh, Vuicic and Aaron Gordon. So let's Didn't not that say team make the playoffs. So let's not say yuck. I said total they made it wins twice, actually, but yeah, yeah, I said total wins. Total, wins. I know, I was just yeah, responding yeah, yeah. to them all. So that's their that was their best roster with 42 wins. This is not even their uh full potential, full full roster at the at helm, and they already have 34 wins, and they're just only gonna get better. I'm very high on Paulo Bancare, even though I think he, he needs to become a better shooter. He is 6'10 and he, he tends to struggle with that. Um his th- three-point percentage is around 30%, but I do want to say his last 10 games, I believe, 
or uh, yeah, it was about 47%, 45% from the field. So he is approving with that. And I think he's just going to uh, become a, a really, really good player. Um, and then another thing with Jalen Suggs, we got to move on from this dude. Um, coming, co- uh, going at J- uh, John real quick about trading Co-Anthony. Uh, yeah, Co-Anthony is going to have the more value because Jalen Suggs is just, just can't hit. He can't, the ball can be the ocean. He still can't hit the hoop. Like he just, he just can't shoot. I don't care if you're an athlete. I don't care how athletic you are. If you can't shoot on the court and you can't be a valuable asset on the offensive end, why do I have you on my roster? When you look at Cole Anthony, that dude as a six man is part, like he's a solid dude that's shooting 51% from the field and 43%, um, well, 30, no, 45% from the field and 37% from the three point line, averaging 13 points a game, five rebounds and four assists. I'll take that any day coming off the bench. So, yeah, who has the better value? Cole Anthony has the better value. But for Jalen Suggs, I, like I said, I, I can't I'm, – I'm not a big fan of Jalen Suggs. Maybe I'll give him time. You know me, I don't really give these young dudes uh, any time and stuff like that. But his first season shooting 36% from the field, that is awful. 21% from the three-point line. They're like, are we playing in, like, the backyard and we just chucking up shots? Like, yeah, he did approve the next season where he went up 41%. And his three-point percentage went to 32, but he needs to have an offensive game because if he doesn't have an offensive game and you could be the good defender, you can look at players like Thibo and stuff like that, who's a really good defender. But guess what? He gets played off the court because he can't hit shots in the in, in the possessions that matter at most in the postseason. Like Davian Mitchell, great example. He's a pit bull, but guess what he has done? He's approved his jumper and has played really, really good basketball in the postseason and for the Sacramento Kings. So let's get rid of this Jalen Suggs dude. And then for Markel Fultz, let's not forget, this dude was a former number one pick in 2017. This was his best year for every statistical stat that you can think of. Minutes, uh, games, he played 60 games played. 14 points, shooting 51% from the field and 31% from three, four rebounds and 5.7 assists, averaging 1.4 steals. That's all a career high for Merkel Fultz, bro. The dude is only 25 years old. He is our point guard for this team. He is going to be there with Paulo Bancaro at the end of the day. And that's who we're keeping over anybody. I don't care what anybody says because he's going to continue to get better. If he stays healthy, the main problem with him in Philly, we all know it was his shoulder. He couldn't shoot. And Philly, outside of a few people, Philly just fumbles their picks. Going to Jaleel, um, Nerlens Noel, like Joel ben was Simmons. good. Ben Simmons was Ben Simmons was good during the stretch. Let's not act like he wasn't. Mm. He was good in Philly until like near Fred the end. Court, right. <laughs> so like, Markel Fultz is a is a dude, and he's finally getting the time, and he's finally have a coach that uh, believes in him, and that is a is going to keep developing in this dude. So I really like him. And then going on to Jonathan Isaac, bro. The best I can do for Jonathan Isaac is sign up for a one-year deal. Outside of that, I'm not signing him to no long-term deal. The last time that we seen him play on a court was a few years ago. I believe it was in 2019, 2020. He comes back again, plays 11 games. What does he do? He gets injured. Like, I'm I'm not dealing with a player that can't stay on the court. Yes, he's a good defender. When he's out there, he he he's one of the best perimeter. He could be a top perimeter defender in the NBA. He does so much stuff, but he's just not out there. And missing three years – Come on, man. It, it, it's just not enough for me. So I'm really high on this um, Orlando Magic's team. I like what they got. Um, hopefully Anthony Black proves Jay wrong. And when he does, we're going to come back to this stream. We're going to come back to his video, and we're going to see what's up, man. But the Orlando Magic, I wouldn't say they're a top six seed, but I could definitely see them being in a top ten, being in a playoff uh, conversation, like a plane, just like the Charlotte Hornets was uh, a few years ago. So shout out to Orlando Magic, man. I'm really big on them. And one more thing, Markel Fultz is not only improving on the offense end, he's one of the – He's improving on the defense end as being a top defender. Uh, so I, I really, I'm really high on this team right now. Yeah. So <clears throat> I think you drafting Anthony Black, they're done with Jalen Suggs off top. I think that's already that that's what you're doing that move for. And I think Jet Howard, I, I think you're trying to see what you get out of Cole Anthony this year. To Trent's point, I do agree. Cole Anthony is a great six man. He's only going to get better. He ended the year on a high note if you were watching Orlando basketball towards the end of the year. And he's actually shown to be a player that, like, he, he's more formidable than he was earlier. Um, with regard to Jonathan Isaac, I don't even know if I want to bring him in for another year because, to me, I've already seen you're, you're not going to be healthy. I'm going to be honest, though, start – Big talking him, saying he got bigger, bulkier, whatever you can. Play that media game and fleece a team with them. 
I think a team will bite. I think a team will take that. And I, I think that's something you can do. You know, if you're going to move Jalen Suggs as well, you could throw him in that package as well and probably get something back that helps you and your team. But that Anthony Black draft, I I, I I think picking him, that that automatically tells you at least one of these guards, they're gone. They're off the team. Do not bring back MCW. Mo Wagner, got to bring him back. Um, Admiral, you're out of there, buddy. We are. We all said that. I don't even know. He, I think he knows he doesn't have a job come October. <laughs> so with that being said, like, this team has some things going well for them. This team, I know they could win some games. Powell Bancaro showed us that he, he's probably the most NBA-ready of the rookies from last year. And I think this second season, he'll he'll help this team win um, a couple more games to at least be in that play-in talk. I don't know if they'll be quite in play-off talks, but I do think they'll be in the play-in kind of, play kind of race. I, they might be one of those teams that, because they're young, because they don't have the experience, they might drop off towards the end. But I do think they're going to be a team that's in the thick of that race uh, regardless. At, at this point, I, I said it before, this is a year for Orlando to evaluate, figure out, you know, what you have in your guard position. Because for the most part, your front court uh, with regard to, you know, uh, uh, Powell Bancaro and stuff, you, you have your guy, so to speak. Markel Foltz, as you guys said, he's played well. He's been better than what he was in the past. And he's only going to get better, especially because that jump shot issue that was going on in Philly. As we all know, that was that was an injury. And with injuries, especially when you're playing, it, it, it's getting better. He's going to get more comfortable shooting the ball. So, I, like you guys said, he's your starter going forward. Chuma Okiki or KK, I'm not sure how you say it. He hasn't shown that he could be efficient. He hasn't shown to be an NBA kind of guy. But I'm unlike some people on here. I feel like you kind of let that let let some players marinate a little bit. I I've seen too often, and I I, I probably feel this way because Lakers fans we always trade our young players, and they normally end up being good. But regardless. I don't know if you try to move him quite yet, still figure out if he could develop into something that maybe be a rotational piece or something of that nature. But overall, Orlando has a good foundation moving forward. It just depends on, you know, one or two moves going forward to see where they go and what direction they actually go moving forward. Now, let me ask you this question real quick, right? Uh, Franz Wagner, we didn't really talk about him too much, but that dude's a hooper. When we go back to the yeah. 2021 NBA draft class, outside of Cade, who's the second best player in that class? You said 21? Yep, that's the class he got drafted. You got Jalen Green, Evan Mobley, Scotty Barnes, Jalen Suggs, Josh Giddy, Kaminga. Those are the picks before him. You I'd said who's Mo the second best player? I'd take Mobley over probably him, but Mobley. then probably Franz. Yeah. That, Wait, over mm -hmm. who? I might take Franz right. over Mobley. I, 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 the thing where I'm going, where what I'm about, going. What about is, Josh Giddy? He's I after those two for me. Well, I see, okay, if I, if I'm going back to 2021, I'm gonna be completely honest. I would have probably gone Scotty if I'm going back to 2021. But if I'm, of course, right now to the like as we sit here, Franz is probably number two. But hindsight's always 2020, so I don't really. I mean, Josh Giddy puts up a great puts up a great challenge right there. That's no for sure. But either mm -hmm. way, it's it it still goes back to hindsight's twenty twenty. Like in the moment, I would have gone Scotty Barnes. I, I, that's just what yeah, it is. I'm, but and and just talking in terms of France and Scotty, but like if you're back in twenty twenty one, I think maybe you go well. Yeah, probably you go Evan Mobley over Jalen Green, and then the rest is pretty, pretty accurate with what regard to what I remember as you know how these guys were you know touted and where the mock drafts and stuff like that were. But as, as we stand, Franz Wagner, he's depending on what I have on my team, he's one of those second, third, or fourth guys that I would choose behind Cade. 
I'm not gonna lie, I'd take Cam Thomas. That's my guy. <laughs> His brother, Bro, what? I would, I would, I would take Alperin Shingoon over Cam Thomas if we're doing a redraft of that. Yeah, for real. He's better than he's definitely 100. Well, we, well, we got to. Alfie is that dude. We just, do a just, we'll, we'll, we'll get to a redraft this summer for sure. But I got, I got a few things I want to comment on that were discussed earlier. I'm gonna start from the top. Not that it's a big comment, but when Mo tried to and then decided to not attempt Skoga Bataza's name. I think he's a guy they probably look to bring back. Yeah. He's not anything him. amazing, but his improvements last year from borderline unplayable center to solid backup big was nice to see, and he's someone that Orlando could look at. They might opt to take his team option over bringing back Mo Wagner. Uh, to Jay, your point about Anthony Black, we know you're not very high on him, but I know I think Steph mentioned it. Uh, I think that's just a direct replacement for Jalen Suggs at this point. Great on the defensive end. And they're just hoping that he's going to be better offensively than Suggs. And at this point, from what we've seen so far, that's not a lot to expect. So I think that's relatively safe there. The biggest thing I noticed from what they're building and the Anthony Black selection just reinforces it is we talked about the fact they might not have a ton of shooting, but they're looking to be solid on the defensive end primarily. Markel Fultz, a great defender. Anthony Black's a great defender. Gary Harris is a solid defender at times. Wendell Carter Jr. is a really good defender. Franz Wagner is a good defender. Like they have a lot of really good defensive pieces on this team right now. I think they have really good defensive upside as they continue to move forward, which for a young team is very rare to say. That's normally something that lags behind and gets picked up later down the line. But we can already see where the defensive pieces are right now for them. They have a lot of good length on this team. When you look at Wendell and Paolo and Franz, I think they have enough there that that's where they're building on. Now they need to work on that shooting. And part of that is why I think Cole Anthony is the guy they keep. Uh, when you're looking at, do you keep him? Do you keep Jalen Suggs? They don't have enough shooting on this team. And from the guard spot, they probably lack a little bit of shot creation. Of course, they have it on the wing. But if you want shot creation from the guard spot, Cole Anthony is that guy right now. I think he's certainly a guy you keep around as a six man, like you guys alluded to. And from there, I think it was you, John, he mentioned having this many guards on your team is a sign of poor drafting and compared it to the Raptors. That's very generous to compare them to the Raptors and honestly giving our Raptors too much credit because we've had this for a long time and continue to stick with it. Orlando are just now getting in this situation and now have the option within the next six to eight months to decide we are picking two or three of these guys and are able to get some more assets for a Jalen Suggs or for a Gary Harris and move off of these guys before they become free agents and not have it be a problem long term. So I'm more than fine with them having a ton of guards right now. It's what they do in the next eight months that makes it important. Can they go and trade for a good bench wing, which is more of a primary need, or do they trade for another pick down the line that then gets Packers in a trade further on or gets them a pick that they end up drafting a depth wing with. That's more of a concern to me at this point than the fact that they have five guards that they probably want to play day one if they all are all on the roster. So that's the most important thing for them is this offseason. season. We've talked about it for the majority of this, vid this portion of the stream for a reason. And that's, where their next step is going to be made or broken is can they move off of these assets now that they've done such a good job of acquiring talent can they make that next step to start to retool some of those pieces into what they need as they push into the postseason and like garrett said top six seed i don't know if i'm quite there but top eight seed in the east next year i think they're there i think next year's the year that they really show that this is a team that's a legitimate threat in the east and all these guys are still on their rookie deals. Like they are far from where they're going to be at their best. Hey, uh, Jeff, just to add to that real quick, and then I'll let you go, Jay, and then Trent, because it looked like you both were going to go. Um, and also, too, like when you said like Gary Harris, he can still be a good defender at times. Like this guy in the playoffs, and I'm sure he's hungry to be back in the playoffs because he was on a Denver team that was the one of the best teams in the West both those years. Obviously, you know, now they're champions. But and they weren't then, but they were still one of the best teams, one of the biggest forces to be reckoned with in the West. And he always rose to the challenge in the playoffs. Like he defended Damian Lillard for big stretches and for some points shut him down. He defended Paul George for some stretches and at some points shut him down. So if we get a scenario where let's say they do make the playoffs, let's say they're like a six, seven, eight seed or something like that. And if they have to play Philadelphia and James Harden's there or Cleveland and Donovan Mitchell's there or something like that, like, he will probably embrace that role in being the guy to guard them. And that's only going to make things easier 
coming into, you know, Markel Fultz being in the playoffs, who he only really had that series in the bubble, or like Anthony Black, who's a rookie, or Cole Anthony, who doesn't really have this experience if he's on the team. So it's only going to make that easier for them to have a guy like Gary Harris that can accept that challenge and has proven that he can thrive under those conditions too. Uh, I just I just wanted to say because uh, you guys are like so willing to let Jalen Suggs go. Jalen Suggs is a pretty good defender himself, and he has some way better shooting mechanics than uh, Anthony Black. Jalen Suggs kind of really gives me Kyle Lowry vibes, but. I just want to say Jalen Suggs was drafted in that 2021 draft with the fifth pick. And because he hasn't been able to stay healthy, he doesn't have much value on the trade market. So you're just going to let uh, Jalen Suggs, uh, like, well, you're not, you're not going to play him? Are you going to let him walk? You, you're going to waste that fifth overall draft pick with, with a guy like Josh Giddy that got drafted right behind him? I, I'm, not, I'm not too sure about that. Well, the problem that's is that's the like, issue. The problem the, is, is they have five dudes, right? So someone's not going to get played. So they need to make a decision before they just let someone rot on the bench and his value deteriorates even more so. And like you mentioned, Suggs might have better mechanics. He's still not a good shooter. Yeah. He's still not a good shooter. <laughs> so shooter. at this point, you can mention the fact he's a great defender. You can mention the fact he's a good athlete. The thing that's least of need on this team right now is defense. So the guy who's laying his cap on his NBA career on the defensive end is the guy that I'm most likely to give up on. And if you're giving up on a guy who's good defensively right now at the guard position, you're giving up on him or you're giving up on a guy who you just drafted a pick six. So it's tough. I get what you mean because his value is definitely lower than you would like it to be right now for where they just drafted him two years ago. But that's kind of the spot they're in right now where they just have a plethora of options at the guard position, none of which are elite, but a lot of which are solid. And Suggs is probably the least solid of those guys. And you can mention the fact he hasn't been healthy, but that's probably a concern in its own right at this point. So I think there's a lot of reasons to move off of him. It sucks that you're going to get less than you would like back for him after picking him at pick five a couple of years ago, but that's just where they're at at this point. Now, let me say this. One more, one more thing, and then I'll let you go, Trent. Sorry, I was just going to add to, and, like, of those five, like, I feel like Gary Harris might not be used that much in the regular season, but come playoff time, obviously, he's going to be used more. So, especially, like, Anthony Black or Cole Anthony, who might be, like, playoff rookies, essentially, if they made it this year, they're probably not going to be getting as big of a role as you want, like, right away. Now, Markel Fultz probably still will because he has a little bit of experience, but that's where it's like, okay, Jalen Suggs also is in that mold He's not probably, in my opinion, he's probably not as good or I don't think he'll be as good next season as either of those other two that don't have experience. And at the same time, Gary Harris provides that as well. So it's like it just doesn't fit in well on the team.